Dead Rising has always been a game that has had players racing against the clock. The game has you beating the main campaign on what is called 72 hour mode, which only gives you 72 in-game hours to finish the game and beat the cases which qualify as the main story requirements. Dead Rising was notorious for its difficulty and strict time requirement, given that every 24 in-game hours was an equivalent of two real hours, meaning you only had six hours to be the entirety of the game. While this made for a fun race against the clock for a casual experience, speedrunning Dead Rising has always had an obvious problem. How do you speedrun a game that takes six hours to beat? I am McDysis, and today I'll be answering the question of how speedrunners solved Dead Rising's biggest issue. Dead Rising locks the player to a six hour rail since the game will not open up story cases until a certain amount of time has passed. This is intended to allow the player to beat the game's side missions and to give plenty of time to play around with things like leveling up or hunting achievements. For speedrunners, obviously we have a dilemma, where every run will essentially take the same amount of time because, for the most part, you can't make the game end any faster, regardless of any actual skill for the story missions. So, uh... <laughs> so what you're saying is that I get to spend longer waiting for the inevitable. Is that it? <laughs> you know, I'm not sure lucky is the word I'd use. As well, even though there is a single strat, which does let you save some time, this was only available in the last few in-game hours, and the whole run would still be consistent of about five hours of waiting, which isn't really fun for anybody. This problem would be only be made worse when considering that the most efficient way to let time pass was to wait in a single room. So if you wanted to get a competitive time, you'd actually need to just wait at the next mission start point until it started. Some of these waits would take upwards of two full hours of just staring at Frank's watch. What we are left with could essentially be defined as competitive waiting, which most runners wouldn't want to tackle aside from the occasional meme stream. Some speedrunners would take to doing the game's optional overtime mode, which, if you'd like to learn more about that, I have made a separate video discussing that run. However, this still doesn't solve our primary issue for the main game. This problem would persist for years because while modding and speedrunning is something that's possible, Dead Rising was traditionally only available on the Xbox 360, making any chance of fixing the problem locked to that console. However, in 2016, things would begin to change. Near the end of 2016, the glimmer of hope would begin to shine. Capcom released a PC port of the original Dead Rising through Steam. While this move wouldn't seem significant, modding PC games would allow runners to do the impossible Dead Rising and make the game speedrunnable. And shortly, we would have our answer. Behold! The end of the world is upon us! Death itself! has overflowed upon the world, defiling us all. Time skip. It started off as a simple concept, but in May of 2017, a Dead Rising community member by the name of Suzuka would go on to have a test build of the first instance of modern Dead Rising speedrunning, Time Skip. This is a mod that uses an external program to allow runners to fast forward Dead Rising's internal clock. The idea behind this is that Dead Rising still has a story mode defined by the major cases, and what runners could do is beat the story cases, use the tool to fast forward the in-game timer, and then immediately start on the next story mission. The mod itself would go through a few iterations. First was a manual cheat engine program, which required runners to hold down the numpad button. If they did this at the wrong time, the entire run would die. Later, this would be refined more into a live split edition that would be more forgiving. With additional tooling, it would once again be a cheat engine program, but one that worked more automatically. The final iteration, which is still used today, would be a unique program that automatically syncs the internal clock and allows runners to seamlessly play the game. For an actual run of time skip, rules had to be enabled to actually decide what should be done and what should be skipped, since the game has a ton of optional missions and bosses. What we were left with was the primary game's cases. To go further into this, the time skip run would end up looking like this. All of case 1, including the Brad escorts and the Carlito boss fight. 
Case 2 with another Carlito boss fight and the Steven fight. Case 4 with Isabella's boss fight. Case 5 for Isabella's escort mission. Case 7 for collecting Carlito's bombs in the maintenance tunnels. Case 8 for another Isabella escort mission and Larry's boss fight. And the facts, which require you to be in Isabella's special safe room and return back to the Hellabad for the end of the run. Other cases like Case 3 and 6 have you already waiting in the safe house and are ultimately just excuses to return back, so they are just fillers and immediately get count as completed within the timeskip mod. However, many of the game's cases like the ends of Case 1, 7, and parts of 8 really just boil down to returning to the safe house. These would be the blueprints for what would be the final timeskip run. With this, speedrunners were now able to finally have a way of playing Dead Rising's 6 hour story mode without having to wait for 6 real hours. Timeskip would seemingly solve every issue a Dead Rising runner would have. The problem, however, is at the time, it wasn't the best received. The game's innate difficulty would prove to be an issue in addition to the rough state of the early timeskip programs. However, this would all soon change. Reputation to uphold! <laughs> Trust me! I'm a speedrunner. Sweet Ola would end up being the first to do major time skip runs. These would end up being on New Game Plus, since this would allow runners to use the Mega Man Buster and the Laser Sword, which would help alleviate some of the game's difficulty. With Swede's initial run of the game, the answer would be found. What was once a 6 hour long auto scroller was now shortened to roughly a 40 minute speedrun as a base time which would continuously be lowered throughout the years. As Sweetola would continue to run the category, this would later inspire other runners to hop on the train, such as Houston, Logan is a Reject, and Paradox AK. There would even be some new game runs of the mod performed by a runner named Dawn of Solace, and later another runner named Hicdysis. Hey look, that's me again! Timeskip would continue to thrive, gaining even more runners even today. Some of these runners, such as Breaking Fuse, Propasol, and Sens1123, would lead to new tech being discovered, massively improving the run, and even adding one of the game's most popular glitches, known as Bike Zip. Timeskip would even go on to make its grand debut on the larger stage at AGEQ 2022, showcasing the culmination of the years of work behind the category. Timeskip was ultimately much more than ever its base function. Initially, it was only an idea to make Dead Rising speedrunnable. However, as the community has grown, so have the resources. This would allow runners to go even further beyond what was possible. Time skip would allow runners to speedrun the main story mode. However, Dead Rising contained much more content, including the savable survivors and optional psychopath bosses. The evolution of this mod would later pave the way to have these types of play also available, meaning a speedrunner can now have a version of the game that would skip time to also include these optional missions. The full developments for Dead Rising 1 would end up creating a full set of categories, including the base time skip, psycho skip, which only included optional game bosses, all bosses skip, which included all the optional bosses and the main story and overtime cases. All survivors skip, which only included the survivor missions. And all scoop skip, which would be the game's essential 100%. Each of these categories would continue to use the word skip in them to honor the original mod that was founded by Suzuka. As well, even the other Dead Rising games like Dead Rising 2 and Dead Rising 2 Off the Record would proceed to get their own versions of some of these mods, therefore also fixing the same dilemma for these speedruns, acting like the finalized version of Dead Rising 1's time skip. While not all games would be meant for speedrunning, this notion wouldn't stop the Dead Rising community from breaking out of their 6 hour mold. Time Skip would revolutionize an entire franchise and give birth to a passionate community of speedrunners who continue to break the game even today. Time Skip truly was the definitive answer to the toughest problem in Dead Rising speedrunning. I once again want to thank not only Suzuka and Sweetola for their work in pioneering Dead Rising, but the Dead Rising community as a whole for all their work and dedication over the years. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I upload regular speedrun explanations myself and have been diving more into speedrunning documentaries such as this one. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and thank you for watching.